Welcome to the David and David podcast. I have a special guest here today, my my uh, middle son, middle kid, David Webb, and he's been uh, very just graduated college. All that good stuff. Very proud of him, and he's going to tell us what he's been doing and what he's looking forward to do in the near future. So, David, take it away. Hi, my name's Kermit the Frog, and I'm here from uh, the Muppet Swamp. Uh, I'm here uh, introducing myself. Uh, you know me and uh, Fozzie and Miss Piggy uh, have fun sometimes. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> uh, my name's David, and I'm here um, in the springs back from school, just chilling. Um, went to school and. Asmosa, it's it's over in the south. Asmosa um, and Alamosa, <laughs> it's down south of Colorado. <laughs> and uh, graduated um, two degrees in the May or the spring, um, music business and vocal performance. And I was working as a server there and teaching voice lessons. And um, this summer, I went to a class at an institute and learned how to become a vocal technician and rehabilitate vocal disorders, and help a voice care team in assisting the rehabilitation process. So what was the name of the school, and where was it? The school that it was that was hosting us was Southern New Hampshire University, but the institution was the McCloskey Certification Voice Institute. And, and what did you learn to do there? What, what kind of uh, classes did you go through, and um, how can you help people in their future? Anatomy classes, disorder classes, and learning about how to be a how to be a better teacher, a vocal teacher, and different ways to teach, coming from more of an anatomical standpoint as opposed from a result standpoint, um, production not result, and then learned about what causes the disorders, diagnosis is for those, and then um, studied a lot, and then learned um, different um, what is it hands-on techniques with facial relaxation and I'm teaching the opening lecture next summer at the Institute. So how'd you find out about this Institute? What was your driving force for it? Um, my teacher at college, Dr. Shelley Beeman, she was a CMVT and then um, when I was back in college I was going through a vocal <clears throat> disorder and she helped me. She rehabilitated me for about seven or eight weeks through the McCloskey techniques and then she told me about it myself and then I went this summer, and she was there too, so it was pretty fun. So it involves this summer and next summer, so it's a dual mm -hmm. summer certificate sort of thing? Mm -hmm. We got 60 credit hours this summer and 60 credit hours next summer, so it's 120 credit hours, and you can also get graduate five graduate credits from it too. So what what is the designation that goes behind your name? What, what, what actually appears? Um, <laughs> nothing. I'm still still Mister, but I'm I have a certification as a voice technician. I mean, if on my resume, I'm not a doctor or anything. But hey, trust me, being a doctor is overrated. I know. So what would you, you know? <laughs> so what was your inclination for music? Because I remember you growing up, you couldn't sing a tune. You couldn't do anything. You're lying. I can always you, I can you, always sing a tune. You couldn't sing worth a chutzpah. So let's let's hear right how you now? get introduced into this and. Because I remember you took the tuba, right? It was a French horn. Day. French horn, tuba, French horn. They both got big, wide lips. There you go. Oh so, my gosh. so let's 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 talk about the um, uh, how you went from that to where you are now. Um, I don't remember. Oh, um, I played French horn. I thought choir was stupid. I thought it was for lazy people, and so I was in band. And so I was in band for a couple of years. And then I tried out for a musical because my friends and my mom made me try out. So I tried out. And then, what does that sound? The, the washing machine. Oh. And then, um, and so I tried out. And then the panel of people, the choir teachers, pulled me aside and said, why aren't you in choir? And I said, I don't know. So then the next year they created a, an honor ensemble for the high school and they asked me to be in it. And so I was in it, started liking choir. And then... At one of our musical performance or practices, there was that is loud. I know. Um, That's so unprofessional. I know. And then uh, at one of our rehearsals, what? Close the door. Oh, it's fine. At one, of, at one of our rehearsals, uh, one of our friends' cousins was there from college, and she was a music major. And I said, "What's a music major?" And I asked her about it, and then got interested, and then jumped in. 
play music. Oh yeah, that's cool. To play Africa by Toto. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll play that next. Uh, so the transformation from uh, high school to college. Uh, you know, when you when you got to college, I knew that you wanted to do music. So you know, I think after seeing you in a couple of plays, that you got that bug and you continued the bug and went from there. So did you know you want to do a music major once you got into college? Or were you doing something different? Did you end up getting what you started working for? Yep, that and more. I went in as a vocal major and then added music business my sophomore year. Um, but no, I went in just thinking music. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I just wanted to do music. And then I ended up in um, an album and some performances and some tours uh, and a singing voice technician in the process. Hmm. So mm -hmm. where are you headed here soon? You getting ready to leave us? Mm -hmm. Maybe for good. Uh, you're headed out to New York. Going to Bangladesh. Um, yeah, <laughs> I met this really nice lady on the plane. She didn't speak English, but I did, yeah. and I assumed she said come out to Bangladesh. So yeah. I'm just following her. Jason um, Bourne, go to Bangladesh. That was you sense. and Kermit the Frog. You got jokes. Nope. Anyway, so you're headed out to New York on mm -hmm. Tuesday, and we're going to miss you. So what what happens in New York? What are you going to do? Who knows? Um, you're going to stay at some place, you're going to be homeless, you're going to ride the subway all night, sing on the subway, what you going to do? Um, staying with my uncle, Uncle Mervin, he lives in Brooklyn, or used to live in Brooklyn, and then I'll move in there, I shipped my stuff out yesterday, it should get there on Wednesday, and then I'll pull in there, and then put rent down, and then for, the ne for this month I'll look for a job, for some support, and then... <coughs> Set up some shows a little later, some open mics and stuff, then busk where I can, make some money where I can. Uh, maybe find some students if that's, that's you know, if, if it can happen. But So what about last summer? Tell us how you got into it last summer and, and all the fun you had and came out there for the wedding. Explain some of that, you know, the, the country boy in the big city. You always say that. It doesn't make oh, any yeah. sense. Um, yes, yeah, oh, yes, it does make sense. <laughs> Trust me. Mr. The, Gary uh, the fact you actually survived, I was very proud. Um, last winter, last January, I wanted to go to New York. So I sat down at my laptop, researched all the live music venues in New York City, and emailed as many as I could. Sent out a couple hundred emails, and then followed up each month for January, February, March. I think for three or four months I followed up with a couple hundred emails to these venues. Heard back from, what, 20, I don't know. Not a lot of them, but some no's, some yeses. They were able to book ten show, nine shows, but I booked another one when I was there. And then um, went out there, and I was trying to find places to stay. So I was calling places and researching places to stay, different couch surfing or Airbnb. And then the process called my uncle and said, can I stay? with you guys for a little while and he said yeah we have the wedding plan so maybe a week or two you can stay with us and I was like cool and then he messaged me a week later and said scratch that you can stay the whole summer with us and so we talked and then um, just stayed the whole summer there which was really um, cost efficient still paid rent but it was cheaper than if I was somewhere else and then um, played 30 live performances and then went to my uncle's wedding got married in Brooklyn my sister and my dad flew out who can't hang, and then... Don't forget um, Grandmommy. Yeah, Grandmommy was there, too. Grandmommy. And then... Big, big Millie was there, and bringing up the rear. And then... Um, what else? Yeah, and then came back and started my senior year of college. So was it a, a hard transformation going from New York, slowing it down, going back to Alamosa? No, it was nice. It was... It was more of a... No, it was more of a transformation going to New York... But coming back to Alamosa was nice. It was slow, and that made me angry sometimes. People just walk in slow. What? Wow. Um, people driving slow. Oh, slow in Alamosa, not New York. Yes, Alamosa. Oh. Well, slow in Colorado Springs also. Dang. So when are we going to see you again? When are you coming back? Soon. When are you going to come back and, and grace us with your presence? Hang out with us? Soon. I'll come back. And chill whenever time presents itself. So what about your website? Tell us about your website. Uh, the actual address and what's on it and what people can expect. All that good stuff. So I'm in my 
second process of reinvention and rebranding. Um, so I've changed my artist name to Dovij, D-O-V-I-J, and that's my website, .com. And right now I'm practicing guitar, learning guitar, and I have about 45 minutes of new guitar material. But that stuff um, I can play finally, but I'm waiting to release that as an album when that stuff's practiced and rehearsed. So 2018 of spring, I'm planning on releasing my next album, which is a year and a half, but that gives me time to solidify everything I've written and you know, by the back of my hand and have it done. And then um, piano, what was the question? Uh, website. Website. Yeah. And everything on it. Uh, it has my resume, EPK. Um, it's kind of a dual thing. If somebody was looking for who I was, or my expertise, my credentials, um, my degrees on there, my the shows I've played, singer songwriter, you know, are on there. Um, McCloskey, I ended up doing my website, but will be on there. Uh, the voice technician thing, and then um, teaching experience, work experience, all that stuff. EPK electronic press kits, kind of like an active resume that has um, different lengths of bios. If somebody were to pull, my, somebody can go to my website if they're writing um, a story about me and pull from my bio. It's written in third person. It was a hundred word, five hundred word, and full page, and so people can pull from those. Um, and then pre-typed press kits and stuff. So you do all the work for anybody who wants to advertise you. I've been to your website and it's pretty awesome. But you know what? You know what is lacking? Mm -hmm. I would love to see a few of the um, uh, songs that you sang at your recital. That's true. Yeah, I should put those out there. I think you put some of those on there because they were awesome. You know, I, I I went to my boy's recital and, and I hate to be biased, but he kicked some real ass. <laughs> so we had a good time. You know, but a shout out to Uncle Marvin who really takes care of him, who we really appreciate, Uncle Marvin and George for taking care of... It's Jorge. Jorge, I'm sorry, Jorge for taking care of David. And uh, we we appreciate David having this podcast with me. He didn't want to do it, but he's such a gracious guy. So is there any shout outs you want to do out there, David? Maybe shout out to our your sister, Tion. Yeah, her. Yeah, her. She's coming home and... First of September, so we'll be sure to have her on the podcast and see what she thinks, which is very interesting. I, yeah, I know you laugh, but yeah, she'll be saying some crazy. She's stuff not going to do it. Oh, oh no, she's doing it. She want to live. She'll do it. So, all right, people. Any uh, closing words, sir? Mm mm. Check your check out your website. Yeah, check. Well, actually, it's not updated. It's pre, it's in a hiatus right now, going through the second phase of rebranding. So check it out, but it's not updated as of as of yet. So when will it be updated? What's your, what's your timeline? When can people see Dovey J bust out? 2000, 2018. But in the, until then, you can still keep up on blog posts there. So it's still still there, but it's not where I want it to be yet. So the blog posts are, are current then? They will be current. They will be current. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, Kermit the Frog says bye. Kermit? Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>